there's a new study out. Well, it came out in August in the New England Journal. Um, I'll show the New England Journal in just a minute, but this is from, uh, it's, the study was called Compass, and it has to do with antiplatelet therapy. <clears throat> I showed this headline because of the, the Compass. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful image. Rivaroxaban, or otherwise known as Xarelto, was found, uh, there's a couple of good points in here, for coronary and peripheral artery disease, and it was halted early because it was overwhelming evidence or efficacy. We'll go over it, but let me introduce myself first. Dr. Ford Brewer with PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability prevention. Um, <clears throat> So what was the, the COMPASS study? As I said, it was published in the New England Journal. Um, and it looked at uh, three different ways of providing antiplatelet therapy. Uh, aspirin, Xarelto, and a combination of the two. Let me go into the details on it a little bit deeper. Um, <clears throat> first of all, who are the patients? Let me see if I can find a, well, I can't. I'll just use my finger as a pointer. <laughs> uh, patients with CAD, coronary artery disease, and PAD, peripheral artery disease. The trial comparison was aspirin, 100 milligrams daily, rivaroxaban, or Xarelto is the brand name, five milligrams twice a day, that's what BID means or a combination of aspirin, 100 milligrams daily, plus rivaroxaban, 2.5 twice a day. <clears throat> the trial groups were 7,470 people with peripheral artery disease. Uh, 4,129 had uh, symptomatic uh, limb disease. In other words, claudication. They would go walking and they would have a start feeling pain down in their in their legs usually that's what peripheral artery disease usually is there are also 1919 with carotid disease uh, and 1422 with uh, coronary artery disease <clears throat> um, or and uh, ABI uh, ankle bra brachial index that's basically where you get a blood pressure change of 10 or more um, between your upper extremities and your lower extremities, indicating that there's clogging, and, uh, significant clogging of the arteries, um, the large AOR, arteries like the aorta, the iliac, those arteries going down to the, um, and usually it's lower in the arterial tree, but again, significant peripheral arterial disease. Uh, <clears throat> not used to having double-sided, and I don't think we'll do that in the, again in the future. But <clears throat> there was a clear winner. Uh, they, they stopped it early, as the headline said, and it was uh, the combination with low-dose rivaroxaban. Uh, there were advantages in using in both. Number one, the advantages were with um, major adverse cardiovascular events and with major adverse limb events, M-A-C-E and M-A-L-E. Now, uh, well, there was a price to pay, and that was increased uh, major bleeds. The bleeds were non-fatal and non-critical, and most were reversible. So, you know, again, it's just like that old statement, there's always something. Now, here's a question. Oh, and here's the... <coughs> Here's the question. What does it mean? This was a, an editorial about rivaroxaban, and it basically says rivaroxaban without, with or without aspirin, stable cardiovascular disease, and uh, what's the impact? In other words, what does this, does this study mean? Uh, as that editorial said, it'll probably change the standards for thrombo- cardiology. Big word, again, break it down quickly. Thrombo, thrombus means clot. And cardiology obviously means study of the heart. So uh, looking at anti-clotting in terms of uh, coronary artery disease and peripheral artery disease. 
what will it change regarding the standard? Uh, probably um, the standard will go to what we call low-dose dual antiplatelet therapy. If you go back and you remember the, the dosage comparisons that, or the comparisons that, we, that they made, there were two monotherapies, one type of therapy, aspirin monotherapy and rivaroxaban or Xarelto monotherapy. Neither one did as well as putting the two together with rivaroxaban in a low dose. <clears throat> what about the, the indications to start someone on antiplatelet therapy? It really doesn't speak to that. And <clears throat> I have a lot more patients that are uh, getting antiplatelet therapy for a different issue, atrial fibrillation, and that's for prevention of stroke. You know, it's interesting to note when you go into the to the MACE, I mean the uh, the COMPASS study, it was it was not all all MACE. In other words, it was not all cardiovascular events. It wasn't MI. It was stroke that was the major differentiator in terms of the results. So logically, it makes you wonder. Well, is this going to change the the, ther the standard for therapy for dual for antiplatelets for atrial fib? to prevent stroke. I think the jury's still out on that right now. <clears throat> it probably won't impact, again, similar to with um, thrombocardiology, when you're looking at uh, atrial fib, it probably won't impact the indications. In other words, did the decision whether or not to use treatment. Probably, uh, Chad VAS, Chad 2 VAS 2 is the standard for that. It looks at things like age, gender, um, other risk factors for stroke. But I do, I do believe this. I think it will likely impact single versus dual antiplatelet therapy. My guess is instead of going straight on Xarelto, we very well may end up finding that the best combination is that low-dose dual antiplatelet therapy with uh, Xarelto 2.5 BID and baby aspirin. Thank you.